before we begin, a special little trivia in the comments. If you can guess what movie my shirt is from, you win nothing. <laughs> Today we're going to be continuing the episode 3 bonus DVD. Uh, we're going to be going over becoming Obi-Wan Kenobi with the infamous Ewan McGregor. Let's begin. Good morning, Mr. McGregor. Morning, Mr. Lucas. The first movie I ever saw in the cinema could possibly have been Star Wars Episode Four. Came with it with such a, um, uh, such a great degree of enthusiasm. Like I couldn't, I can't, I've been waiting for this for weeks. I've been thinking, every morning I say, I wonder if it's today I'll get to choose. <laughs> We'd never seen anybody with the same commitment that he gave. So we were thrilled. Are you and McGregor, Obi-Wan Kenobi? I'm George. I'm responsible for all this. <laughs> First criteria for casting Obi-Wan Kenobi was somebody who was complementary to Alec Guinness, but not just sort of copy it, but create a, an addition to that character. Where are you going, Master? For a drink. Because he's younger, he's in a completely different place, and he's a very active Jedi, so I needed somebody very physical, somebody who was a fantastic actor. No. And who could pick up the mannerisms and the essence of uh, the Alec in his performance. So this was like a dream come true to him to see the final, you know, circle of his, his early life come to come to grips with playing this great part. It's great, isn't it? God I used to fantasize about things like this as a kid. Yeah, I'm huh? In the original three, Alec Guinness was only in the first half of the first movie. He cropped up now and again as a shadowy blue guy. But we only saw him for half a film, and, and yet he created this iconic figure that, that I've grown up knowing. You must do what you feel is right, of course. And now to have Ewan McGregor just doing the nuances of Alec as, as a young man, the charm and the wit and the eye and, and just the gentility of the guy and the strength. You will be a Jedi, I promise. We see right from the start, from episode one, that Obi-Wan becomes this little boy, Anakin's mentor and master, and the fact that he's the disciplinarian and he's always telling Anakin off, and Anakin's always been cheeky to him. And you know, there is a father-son thing there, which is, which is nice. And I refer to him in the end of the move, this movie, as being like brothers. You know, the first half of this film, you see an incredible bond and a real friendship there, so that there is something important that's lost. It's written in a way to be reminiscent of Alec Guinness, and it's written in a way that he becomes more and more the father figure in the series. Patience, use the force, think. So as it goes on, the third film he's much more like Alec Guinness than he is in the first film. I always watch a lot of Alec Guinness before I start. I have done each time, but this time I got them to make up a looped reel of all his scenes. But in this case, it's quite handy because I'm that bit closer to him now, you know, than I was in episode one. I'm. This is my last shot at making it match up, making it Alec Guinness. Let go your conscious self and act on instinct. It's been more important this time than the others to get a, an Alec Guinness feel and look. But this time we had to kind of match it more physically as well. So um, I have done Photoshop composite where I, I try to take uh, Ewan and turn him into Alec. They have almost identical eyes. They have the same grooves here. The mouths are in exactly the right place. They say this triangle is the most important thing and it defines your character. And on the two people, their characters, it's there, that triangle is exactly wow. the same. Wow. So Look I think that. my hair is quite like Alec Guinness's and it's, it's no longer a mullet, which, is, which I sported beautifully in episode two which I've now passed on to Hayden. He now carries the mullet flame, you know, through episode three. Is he wearing a big Jedi mullet? Yep. Top man. But the continuity in Alec Guinness's look is absolutely all over the place. That looks like someone else pretending to be Alec Guinness. Yeah. It looks like the whole hairpiece is just swiveled. What hairpiece? Not the one. Hairpiece. Alec Guinness didn't wear a hairpiece. Sometimes his hair's here, sometimes it's down here, you know. There's not a great deal of continuity going on there. <laughs> His attempt to try and emulate a great actor who he has an enormous amount of respect for is one thing. But what he's done in the process is he's brought the greatness of that character to himself and his own performance. Hello there. Hello there. There is a phenomenon in Star Wars that was built in when I started, which is I was hiring actors uh, sometimes for 10 years, and I was hiring them very young. So I was able to use their maturity over the years as part of the character. In the case of Ewan, he starts out as a Padawan learner, 
and then he ends up as a very sophisticated Jedi Master. And as he's grown into the part, he's gotten even better at the physical aspects of the character, you know, between the films as they grew older. Cut. Well, that was good. One of the greatest pleasures I get is, is seeing that somebody can do something, even if they don't think that they can do it themselves. But I think through doing this, um, he's become way more physical and way more capable uh, than he ever was. And wow. that's one of the main reasons why I do it, is seeing somebody reach their maximum potential and then go on from that. <coughs> that's good. Yeah. That's good. Can't wait till we get to that part. I think Ewan realizes that he, uh, on this particular set, was one of the older characters in the group, and therefore he was the big brother. He was the one that was sort of controlling the group in some cases because he had the most experience, which is very much in the nature of his character. But he would keep things lively and happy and not let people get too dragged down by the day-to-day -day operations of the movie, which is, you know, what a big brother does. <laughs> what? also contributes greatly to the performance is working with other actors and if you can work with a good receptive actor and a giving actor who's on the other side of the camera then your performance benefits greatly and working with Ewan has been exactly like that. What you notice with Ewan is his total involvement in everything that he does. He's completely involved, goes straight into it. That's what it's all about. I've still never met anyone like you, and he's so committed to what he does. He is such a physical performer. He works incredibly hard. He crafts his performances in a very professional manner, which is makes it much, much easier for a director to work with him. And I think Ewan is is right up there. I mean, he does exactly what Alec did on the first film, and he brings even something greater to the second trilogy. So a couple things before we go on to the next video here. One thing I really like about Ewan McGregor is that he's Scottish and he has this accent. Um, obviously, it's different than someone from you know, Britain. And he takes that and he morphs it into what Alec Guinness would sound like, but a younger version of that. And he did his best to actually... Have, his, have the same cadence, have the same pronunciation of words, and so on and so forth. And so it's not only, you know, just his movements and his uh, athleticism when it comes to, you know, in Revenge of the Sith and all throughout the prequels, but it's the little details that go into all of this stuff that a lot of casual fans or casual viewers even, uh, or first-time viewers, won't really notice how much effort has gone into this from the actors. And as I've said this many times before, Hayden Christensen tried to really cater his cadence towards um, James Earl Jones with the whole, you know, the slow, monotone, yes, my master. Said it a million times, but it's true. That's the way it is. And these actors have done a fantastic job at trying to emulate that and really go down to the nitty gritties of every single detail that a lot of us don't really recognize, don't really notice or you know pay respect to so my hats off to him what i really am curious to see is how his portrayal of obi-wan kenobi is going to be now with the kenobi show which is going to take place years after revenge of the sith i think it's five years but don't quote me on that now this obi-wan kenobi is going to be a very different obi-wan than we have ever seen this obi-wan is going to be, I think, m the most depressed and destroyed Obi-Wan um, that we've ever seen on film, uh, cartoons, comics, whatever. Clone Wars included. This is the Obi-Wan where the toll and depression of Order 66 and what he has done to Anakin and Mustafar and Sidious and, and the Jedi losing and everyone becoming extinct pretty much is at its peak. And this is where... Ewan McGregor's acting is really going to come out and we're going to see some real stuff here because he's now got to show all the PTSD that Obi-Wan is going through during this time. This is not Alec Guinness, Obi-Wan Kenobi, who may or may not have understood the grim details of what Obi-Wan has just gone through, which Ewan McGregor understands fully because he acted that scene, acted all those scenes, acted in the prequels. He knows the life he left behind. And he knows the life that he now leads and the life ahead of him. So seeing all that come together, and I really wouldn't be surprised if we see a very, very different Kenobi. One who's not as optimistic, um, 
as he always is, as we know Obi-Wan to be. So that's something I'm very excited for. And I think it would be interesting if we see someone come in there and help Obi-Wan when he's at his lowest of lows. I'm hoping it could be Qui-Gon's vo uh, voice. Uh, because we know in the book he doesn't materialize to Obi-Wan until later on uh, down the line near New Hope. And since this takes place only years after Revenge of the Sith, well, hey, I guess we'll see what happens. So, I'm very uh, stoked for that. I hope that uh, it comes out sooner than later. I know, you know, everything going on, they've delayed a lot of stuff, but um, my hopes are high. You know, and I know that we're going to get it and I know it's going to be kick ass and it's going to be great. As for the rumors regarding it's being one series long. I explained that in today's uh, or yesterday's live stream. I think it could be good. I think it could be bad. It could be good in the sense that they're really going to not waste any time on filler stuff. And they're really going to get down to all the minutia and the details of Obi-Wan during this period. The bad part is that, well... Of course, I'd like to see more and, um, you know, go into more details and more seasons and this and that. But I think, you know, the way we look at it is they were going to give us supposedly a trilogy of Obi-Wan Kenobi movie. You can see that with the interview that Ewan McGregor had with Collider. And we're kind of getting that. You know, we're getting a six-hour, I think it's six-episode, uh, six-episodic, kind of like the prequels in the originals, all put together. And uh, in one season. So it's like a six hour Kenobi movie, which is pretty rad, I think. It's pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know you, where, where you think the shirt's from. And um, I'll see you in the next video. We'll go on to the next one right after this. So may the force be with you. See you guys.